Boy, g'day guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought and on this episode, it's winter, it's cold as f but we're gonna be fitting out the interior of the canopy. Oh, nothing in there. With this, and 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 this. Patreon, support the future of Built Not Bought. Alright, good morning guys. Now, the canopy has spent the last few days at the old man's workshop. They've done all the skinning up for uh, the frame and this thing. So what they pretty much did is just use the big guillotines and the benders they had at the shop there to actually cut out the roof and the floor. And they've also done the doors as well. So. As per our frame that we've made, they've actually folded it up to match that perfectly. So all we need to do now is use some of this bonding adhesive glue and probably a couple of rivets as well to actually bond this frame to the skin there. And once that's done, clamp it up, let it set overnight and then start looking at doing the door locks and stuff. The only other thing that needed to be done was <coughs> work out the door seals. So this has been bent up here which should be glued there and a rubber placed on here when the door shuts it'll be a tight seal there um, the top section has been cut on a bit of an angle here that's to compensate for the um, angle of this of the frame here so when it finishes it'll all be flush with the door that's the idea with that so um, we'll get to skinning that thing together set it off to powder coating and then once it returns we can start looking at fitting out the interior and um, something a little special has gone on top as well. I think it's safe to say we've definitely hit winter in Perth at the moment. Now we're going to start looking at doing the inside of this. So obviously I've just got on the uh, Super Center Special here on the drawers. Nothing wrong with them. So to fit this out, I think what I'm going to do is just put these drawers on the side here and then have the fridge here, freezer on the other side. And this will sort of be the main side that you work out of. Like the top fridge slide on these drawers can act as like my table in a way so that's what's going to go on there and I've got this mesh here I don't know if you can see it kind of like fencing wire or something so I'm going to cut that and make a bit of a, a back shield board thing here where I can hook stuff on like your fire extinguisher some wiring and cabling can go there as well so we have your freezer here and then the battery is going to go down here where all the cables run up across that gas board is going to be here at the front because this is a side you don't really access as much so there's going to be random thrown in here and then the gas bottle you can turn on and then feed um, a cable across a gas line cable I don't know across to the other side and that's where you can sort of do your cooking in that so yeah that's what's going to happen at the moment I've made a little power box which is going to go on the wall and then all the lights are just going to be LED strips and, and stuff on the doors some inside um, we've got to run power for the fridges there'll be an inverter going on there as well um, so all that's got to be installed and that's what we're doing at the moment. The doors still need to be hung, so when they're hung, we can start fitting this thing out. So that's the plan for this episode. Pissing down! Okay guys, crisis averted now. I was bringing this canopy inside and within the last 10 minutes, all the plans have changed. And that is thanks to Louis and Brad who are here today helping me out. I'll show you guys in a sec these boys. They are from the last series of Chasing Lines. You may recognize them. But um, I originally had the fridges at the back, which I didn't want to do, but the way the layout was going to work with where the battery's going and all that, it was just the best option. But they've convinced me, no, nah, you need the fridges at the front because it balances the weight out. So I've actually spun the freezer around, which helps it because now it opens the right way. 
and the fridge goes on the other side and then it gives room for the battery in between. So it keeps the battery at the front where the electrics are and now the drawer and the lighter stuff and the gas bottles all at the back. So looking good. So what Louis and Brad are doing, Brad's sorting out the electrics, Louis's doing the divider at the moment for the center and um, I'm doing some other stuff on the car. We've only got two weeks, so it's pretty hectic right now. Hey, Louis, AJ. Yo. Hey, so how long till we go away? Uh, what is it, two weeks? Oh, two weeks. <laughs> Can I have a look at the car? <laughs> oh my God. All right, I think it's time for less chat and more work. Hello, Bradley. All right, he's the man who knows all about the electrics, so I'm gonna leave him to that and I'll get to this. So yeah, here's that little box I uh, put together last night. Now, I pretty much, from Bunnings, it's like a, a money safe box thing in Bob. So, but I've got this switchboard pre-assembled, just got it off eBay because I couldn't be bothered making my own. So yeah, when she opens up, all the cables are inside so you can pre-wire everything. I'm gonna put relays in there as well. And then everything coming out of the box will just go straight to the actual accessories. So I'm gonna mount that to the wall today and then start all the wiring on that. So these are actually like rock lights, but I've already got them in my car. So these ones here, I've got some more and I'm gonna put them in the canopy. Tight fit. It was a tight fit. <laughs> Look what he did to my paint. It's all right, you won't see any of that. Well, progress has been made. It looks like the drawers are pretty much mounted. Now, this box is secured. And, uh, <clears throat> Louis, what else has happened? Not much. Not oh, much. not much. No, it's looking good. It's been a day of progress. Down. My down lights are in. <laughs> That's like my favorite part. So what I've done is stripped it all out and I've actually just found some carpet on Gumtree. It was free coming out of someone's house. I was gonna put marine stuff in here, but there's no real need to, like this stuff's fine. And I'm gonna cut the other side now and lay it on the other side of the cage there, then get the drawers back in. I've just gone down a red dot and grabbed a few of these um, shades here, just the automotive shades for your windscreen or whatever, and cut them up for the shape of the doors and the roof and just velcro them on there and it should help keep the heat out like it may or may not work i know it works good for windows but that's generally because the light comes through but whether or not it stops any heat we'll soon find out um other than that there will be a couple of clips to be bolted into the floor here to hold the freezer down and then i'm going to bolt the actual gas bottle holder to the back of the drawers there and add in a couple of clips to hold this um cage in as well and on the other side, I'm going to mount the inverter. I'm going to mount the, the Red Arc BCDC charger um, and also hook up the battery, which will need a couple of clamps as well. That's pretty much what the plan is at the moment. And that should kit it out for what we need to do. So let's get to that. So, the last thing I'm gonna put in here is the inverter. Now, the reason it's the last thing is because I've been waiting for this to come out. It's a new product by Ridge Rider. It's their new 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So I was pretty keen to get that installed because, um, well, for my requirements, this is the kind of size that I need. It's basically, I'm gonna be like charging camera gear, drone batteries, charging my laptop, stuff like that. So what this has, it's a little remote panel which will tell you how much power it's, it's drawing. Um, I think it's also removable as well. Anyway, it comes off. It's like a Bluetooth remote thing. So I could even put this inside the driver's cab there and monitor it from there. It's got the two outputs, a couple of USB chargers on off switch. So I'll probably mount it that way. And then these cables just go into the back and straight to the battery. So get this thing installed and then that pretty much finishes off this little backboard here. Whack the battery and everything and everything should run sweet. Okay, now the next thing I want to have a look at is this BCDC charger. Now I just bolted that to this backboard that I've made but I remember back in, was it episode 6 or 7 where I made the dual battery system? I did mention that I was going to run this in the canopy and the reason for that is because this canopy is going to have its own battery and it needs a special charge for that because it's so far from your alternator in order to get a proper charge and to avoid running really big cables, 
you want to use one of these. Now this is kind of like a trickle charger and I'll show you up here. What it does is actually measure the charge profile for different types of batteries. So depending whether it's like a lithium ion or an AGM or just normal lead acid, it will give it the correct type of charge and the different sort of voltage. See up here it tells you it goes 15, 15.1, 14.6, it'll set the max voltage so it gets a full proper charge. And it also can take solar and um, the vehicle charge itself. So i um, actually going to have solar on this canopy as well on the roof, so that's another reason why I got this. Now this brown wire here gets connected up to the um, battery itself and then there's a yellow one which I've actually wired into the solar and you can do that directly so you don't actually need the, um, the solar regulator which because I think these panels put out up to 20 amps or something so this um, charger can also regulate that voltage as well. And then there's the red wire there which I've hooked up to just the car alternator through an Anderson plug plugging into the rest of the car. So pretty simple setup, there's just four wires and then we'll ensure that um, this battery in here is going to stay tip top. And it's also good because um, when I leave this thing sitting at home when it's not connected to the car, the solar can just keep this thing topped up. Or I've got this isolator here which I can turn off completely and then that'll stop um, any, any power going to the battery there and just leave it sitting. So. Pretty cool to get that installed. It's going to clean up the wiring here. And we're pretty much done in here. Three days later. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it is night time now. And the reason for that, I was literally watching paint dry. <laughs> anyway, it's dry now. So I mean, little bracket I made up, we can test out. Oh, I never get in here somewhere. Oh God, this doesn't feel safe. So that's going to go about there somewhere. Okie dokie. I think what I might do first. Hmm, I lost the mark. Oh no. Right, I'll be back. Again, good. All right, here we go, guys. Here's pretty much the basic final setup, what we've got here. I'll take you through a quick run around. There's gonna be a way more in-depth review when I do the actual rig rundown video of this thing, but pretty much the drawers are there. I've got my fridge here, which has its own little slide, so that can pretty much, like it doesn't need an actual fridge slide because it's got that. Here we've got running water, which I'll show you on the other side where that comes from, but that's just gravity fed pretty much. Um, this is the extension for the gas bottle, so you can pretty much bring this straight out and onto the table there um, around the other side. Obviously we had this roll bar put in which acts as like a, a support for the tires as well. So that's for the spare tires and a bit of strengthening for if it rolls over. Here's that gas bottle. Still got to mount the actual bracket but that runs through to the other side there. And then these are the two water tanks. So <clears throat> this is sort of temporary until I can actually get a proper tank put in underneath the tray but there's just two 20 litres here which gravity feed over to the other side. And then I've got a freezer here. So on bigger trips, I can have the freezer in here. Um, on smaller trips, I can just use the space for like chucking the swag or whatever, or any camp chairs and stuff. So pretty much that's sort of my semi-ideal setup. Like canopies are one of those things that you pretty much want to, you know, keep tweaking as you go on. Cause like there's always different bits and pieces that you want to add or take away, or depending on what specific trip you're doing, you can change stuff up. But um, electric wise, all my switches and that are here. So at the left and the right door LEDs, there's the inside LEDs, which are these down lights here. They're actually rock lights, but they light it up pretty nicely, I must say. Switch for the inverter and then a separate switch for the fridge and freezer. So what I can do is if there's a campsite with 240 volt power, I can just come in and switch the 12 volt off and then pull out an extension cord and just plug it into 240 so it saves a bit of battery there. But anyway guys, thank you so much again for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like and share this video and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, peace. Oh, hello there. So you like watching Build Not Bought, do you? Well, there's plenty more content for you over on my Patreon page. As soon as you sign up, you get all the backdated content. Enjoy. Bye for now.